Greetings everyone and welcome. I'm the Chancellor Soul Mike Boone and you've tuned in to another edition of Soul Facts, a show highlighting the history and music of legendary artists and preserving their legacy. In this edition, we feature an artist whose musical contribution helped trailblaze a new genre in R&B, Southern Soul, during his heyday of the 1960s through the 70s. Soul Facts Spotlight Artist, Mr. Joe Simon. On that mountain, mountain. Oh, God's God's Born September 2nd, 1943 in Simsport, Louisiana, Joe Simon's early childhood years began as a cotton picker who was occasionally lazy and tried to avoid work as much as possible. His musical roots, however, was planted in the choir of his father's church, Pilgrim Baptist. The Simon family, seeking better opportunities, later moved to Richmond, California, a suburb of Oakland, by the time Joe turned 15 years old. There, Simon pursued his gospel roots by joining the Golden West Gospel Singers. The opportunity for secular music was just too great to ignore, so the Golden West Singers transformed into the Golden Tones. They recorded their first song in 1959 entitled Little Island Girl. Backed by Dorita on the Hush imprint, founded by husband and wife team Gary and Clara Thompson. Soon afterwards, Joe was fired from the Golden Tones. Gary Thompson believed in Joe's talent and encouraged him to go solo. Thompson then hustled Simon into his independent GB studios to record a composition he wrote called My Adorable One, released in 1964. I can say Chicago's VJ Records, now establishing their headquarters in California, bought Joe's contract and the master of my adorable one and released it on their imprint, in which brought a multitude of airplay and nationwide appearances, including the world famous Apollo Theater. The song reached number 8 on Cashbox Magazine's Top 50 R&B location the week ending November 21st, 1964. Afterwards, Joe traveled to Muscle Schultz and recorded in Rick Hall's famed studios, his second hit, Let's Do It Over, zooming straight to the number 13 position on October 16, 1965. In August 1966, VJ filed for bankruptcy for misguided funds and was forced to shut down his operations. Simon, now without a record deal, continued the tour. You know, in the early days of his career, Joe Simon experienced hardships. During his residence in Richmond, California, he lived in a chicken coop no bigger than a car garage. He sang in local clubs for a minimum wage of $5.50. So he couldn't afford a place of his own. Joe was so poor, he owned one suit that he had pressed instead of cleaning. He had a friend named Roland Williams that lent him a pair of shoes. When Joe became successful, he tried to pay Roland back, but he wouldn't take it. While traveling cross country on the Chitlin circuit, he once visited the 20 Grand Club in Detroit and wasn't accepted. 
because he was an unknown artist at the time and they didn't think much of his talent. So instead, Joe became a popular draw at Phelps Lounge across town. Phelps Lounge was known as the Class A nightclub. So far, Simon was on his way. During his travels, Joe met R&B disc jockey John Richborg of WLAC Radio in Nashville, Tennessee. Known as John R., Richborg and Simon became close friends as well as business partners. John R. brought him to Soundstage 7, a subsidiary label of Monument Records, founded by Fred Foster in 1963. John R. was made head of the A&R department at Soundstage 7 and became Joe's producer. From 1966 to 1970, Joe Simon recorded a string of 15 classic hit singles on Soundstage 7, starting with What is a teenager's prayer? Teenager's prayer it's not very hard to define Nine pound steel I've got to say good morning To a nine pound steel You keep me hanging on Just enough Message from Mama Maria. Got a message from Maria. And his first million seller and Grammy winner of 1970, The Choking Kind. Your love scared me to death, girl. All this other choking kind. That's all it is. His tribute to the Apollo 11 astronauts, Moonwalk Part 1. You got me. Done the moonwalk. You got me. Done the moonwalk. Further on down the road. Further on down the road. You will accompany me. Oh. Yours, love. May the fruit of my toil be yours, love. May it be. And an LP cut that was released in 1972, right after Joe departed from Soundstage 7, Misty Blue. Later, a million seller for Dorothy Moore in 1975. Would you believe that Joe Simon hated the choking kind and R&B music altogether? I only meant to love you Unbelievable Didn't you know it, babe? Didn't you know it? In December 1967, Joe received some tragic news that his dear friend Otis Redding was killed in a plane crash in Madison, Wisconsin along with the bar case. The funeral took place on Monday, December 18, 1967, at the Macon Civic Auditorium, where Simon served as one of the pallbearers, along with Joe Tex, Johnny Taylor, and Solomon Burke. Joe also took the pulpit and sang, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross, and was overcome with grief while performing the song. John R.'s association with Soundstage 7 ended in 1970. So he and Joe left and inked a deal with Spring Records, a distribution label of Polydor, a British imprint. Simon had 25% share of Spring Records and became part owner of the company. Not only was Joe Simon successful as an artist, but now was entering a new business phase as a part of his career and success. But will success spoil Joe Simon? You be the judge. <laughs>